this is a very beginning carving or a woodworking project that I know for a fact 100% anybody can do. So I ask you, do you like birds? I love birds. Now I have some way better videos on carving birdhouses in my um, earlier videos with the Dremel. We're talking about Dremel carvings here. This is an old cedar fence board. There's two of them. What is this stuff? Five inches. The farmer gave it, the farmer's got like hundreds of them where I chainsaw carve and he says, take as many as I want if I'm going to make birdhouses so, or whatever projects. So this is like five and a half. It's all five and a half. So this was two, I cut up two four foot fence boards. I Googled quickly. If you want, if you care enough, I Googled um, how big to make the holes for native birds to your land. So this was like one, 1. 1.5 or something. So I think the sparrows or something can't get in there. I'm not too sure. I'm not a, I'm not good at all at um, like cutting square and fitting this. I just, I, I didn't go by them. There's tons of formulas online you could use to build your bird house. This one, I just measured it, cut it and, it is what it is. So, and I used my bandsaw to cut it. So even this, the top of this, where the so this will be a roof here. Let's see, like it's not that square. See the gaps? Don't care. I'm gonna glue it, or I'm gonna carve it, and then I'm gonna brad nail it. You can do whatever you want to do. You can use screws, or there's like I said, there's tons of formulas how to build a birdhouse and measure it and stuff. You can use a handsaw. You can just use a hole drill to carve the hole. I got some air vents for the side. I got some little pee holes for the bottom. And um, I wasn't even going to carve this, to tell you the truth. I just, there's a, a long, a few years ago, some, a subscriber sent me a birdhouse in my carport. And I seen that there was, he sent me a birdhouse, a wood spirit birdhouse. And I seen in my car, it's in my carport underneath in the, uh, not when it gets rained on. And I seen that there was birds trying to move in there, but the the hole was too low. The hole for the the wood spirit's mouth was basically where the floor was. So I seen birds building stuff up top of the hole, but like with moss and grass and stuff. But it, I don't think it's going to work. So I said, well, I'm just going to make myself another quick bird house. Like I said, I wasn't planning on carving this, and it's not going to be much carving. It's just trying to motivate you guys. If you guys love birds, well, build a birdhouse. That's how you're going to get them around your yard. Even if you're in an apartment, build a birdhouse. Put it up on your balcony. Hopefully, it's kind of late in the spring, but we'll see. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just, you know, this is weathered wood. So sometimes they look better weathered. They don't look, sometimes like they look better not carved, but I'm going to carve this. So I think we're going to start with this one. I think I'm just going to do... I'm going to cut it, like draw, let's draw it. I'm going to do a tree, make it look like bark here. So it's just a tree. There's a hole in the tree. And this one I might carve on the sides. I might carve two trees, like pine trees. All right. So the face here, get your center line. Um, we'll make it look like, so there's a hole in the tree, like a knot, like there's a knot right here. So we'll just put a line here. And the line here. Now we'll remove a bit of this wood on the side here to make this tree stick out. And all we're going to do is kind of like, um, you can do some stuff for this knot. So it kind of looks like a knot. Crazy weird stuff around it. Then we're just going to do some lines. Cut in some lines and go like this. And just do a quickly carving so it looks like it, there's a hole in the freaking, the hole in the freaking tree. Yep, Dremel carving. So I'm going to start it off with the Cutsall Extreme Flame Burr, wherever that is, right here, if anybody wants to get these burrs. You know, if you're going to get into Dremel carving, I suggest don't use the Dremel burrs. Yeah, they're good for some little details and stuff like this, but burrs like this are the burrs that really hog out the wood and make your uh, carving experience so much more enjoyable. This is the Cutsall Extreme Flame Burr. See how aggressive it is? Come on, zoom in. 
If anybody wants to get these birds, just go to the description below. It will take you to the console site. So I'm going to cut here, cut here, remove the wood, elevate this tree a bit. Then we'll use a different burr for the, um, then we'll paint it, then we'll sand it, and then that's, that's all you need to do. You know, you could carve this so it's like a bum hole. <laughs> just kidding you can make it so like that's a flower center of a flower the, the wood spirits i used to do so it was the mouth and the beards come down um like i said there's lots of older birdhouse videos in my playlist but um you can do whatever you want to do right so just have fun that's what it's about and it's about um really i might even paint this brown after it's just about enjoying your time and having something in your yard that you love to look at that will uh, support nature, I guess. You know, if you're married, you got a beautiful wife at home, or if you're a lady and you got a husband, you could, you know, you could draw a heart on. You can make it so it looks like a tree. You could kind of look like somebody got a knife and scribbled in the tree, put a heart on there, put your initials inside the heart. The, the possibilities are endless. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. <laughs> I'm going to change burrs. It's still the extreme. I just put a sharper one in there. Okay, so you see how I'm doing that? Just cutting, removing. That's what wood carving is, cutting and removing. Okay, so you can see there how cutting, removing elevated the tree from the background. Now, when I was carving this, once you get going, your mind opens up. You know, I could have carved it so a branch comes off here, then wraps around the side of the house, you know. Like I said, the possibilities are uh, endless. Now I got this taper burr on here. This is the cuts all taper. I think this is the gold one, actually. It has a finer tip. I'm just going to go along and do this. Yeah, that's, that's good enough for me. So I'm going to pull up my uh, flop sander and quickly sand it, get rid of these fuzzies. This one's um, all white from carving epoxy. I got a better one here. This is just a sanding mat. What's a mandrel you get on Amazon? They're like, you get like five for like 10 bucks. It's one eighth, so it fits in your Dremel. Um, do I have one with better sandpaper? Yeah, so this one's better. And I just use. Uh, the sandpaper with um, the cloth backing and uh, put it on there and one backwards and just quickly sand it. Um, so I keep, I keep thinking it's scotch break. The name of the sand, it's uh, emery cloth. This uh, sandpaper with the cloth backing is emery cloth. Yep, that's it. When you use these uh, sanding mandrels, turn your Dremel down because um, this is lots of force or friction, whatever you say, on your Dremel motor, flex shaft and everything. And um, turn it down because, well, it will fry your Dremel if you run it too fast for too long. There you go. Good enough. There's your tree. So let's move on to the sides. Let's keep running live. So, um, this, uh, oh, also, so where's the bottom of this? This is the bottom I wrote on the parts. This is the roof. Bottom, where are you? Oh, here it is. I got the pee holes in there. So the way I made my tree house is like 
kind of like that. I was going to carve the bottom and the match the top, but um, this one has, a, I left a little bit of a lip on it for the birds to sit on, have a little break. Some people say don't uh, put nails down here for the birds to perch on because it will give the enemies like crows a chance to, to st stand on the nail coming out or the screw or whatever, a piece of wood, and put their head in there and eat the egg. So I don't do that. But I'm not going to carve this bottom. So let's um, do these trees. Now you have to be careful that you do them on, you know, because you have two outsides. You have a left. These are the sides. You have a left and a right. So uh, I just kind of line them like this. Because if you carve them both on the left side, on the inside, one would be on the inside, one would be on the outside, if that makes sense. So make sure that you you know you're going to be carving on the outsides of the piece. And it sounds stupid, trust me, I know, but I've done it. So we're just going to do like a pine tree here. Boom. Um, this is something really simple. Just like that. Stock tree. Carve this other one on. Then, you know, if I want to paint it, I'll paint it. I'll see how I feel when I'm done carving this. It won't take me that long. You know, I'll say with your pine trees, the more swoosh you can get in there, the better it's going to look. So make your tops really thin. A nice swoosh in there. See, like this one kind of just looks like a pine cone. But I'll give it more of a swoosh line. So, yeah, the thinner that you can make your tops of your trees, and the more whoosh, curve you can give it, the better it's going to look. So, I'm going to cut on the outside of these trees exactly how I did this one. I'm going to cut along this line, remove the wood, and I'll be back and we'll put some tree detail stuff in there, some pine needles. Yep. So, I can listen to some music for a bit. I'm going to cut around this stock too and remove the wood around there. All right. So before I carve these, I thought I would get some, uh, I got some dollar store black acrylic paint here. I painted in those, those bark lines quickly. I'll sound that off later. So it's smoother than we're going to paint this brown. Um, these trees, remember I said the more that you make up, make it nice and round like that, the better they're going to look. Like this one, you see how it's just kind of straight? So I'm being a hypocrite. I'm not going to recarve these, but the more swoosh that you give, give them in there like that, the better they're going to look. But this is for myself, and I'm not spending a lot of time on it, and I wasn't planning on even carving this, like I said. So now I think let's do some uh, details for the trees. Sorry, one thing else I should have said is this is Western old Western red cedar, uh, old rotten fence boards like the tops and bottoms of the boards were rotted. So look on Facebook Marketplace. Lots of people are selling those boards for a dollar a piece. Lots of people are tearing down fences. So just keep an eye. And you don't have to use cedar, like whatever. Use whatever wood you got in your local neighborhood or go to your hardware store and buy a couple fence boards. You know, like um, you could use pine. I don't know what. I don't know what they make fence boards around the world, but this is cedar. Just use what you can get at your local, uh, where you live. <laughs> I live. So you can do the, the tree leaf needle things anywhere you want. There's lots of different ways to do it. Like you can, I don't really want to draw too much on here, but whatever. You can do it like this. You know, get your center line here, right? And then just keep bringing them out here. And make them bigger as they go down. See how it's smaller, bigger, bigger, bigger. Then you get a bit and you do your undercut. So we'll do that one that way. We'll get a, we'll, you have to use two different bits for this. Then this one, I probably really should cut that out like that. Remove that wood. Let me get that done quick just so I'm not a hypocrite and it gets some more curvature in this tree. Okay, there's simple fix for it. Easy problem. So this one, we'll, we'll do, um, well, we'll kind of do it the same. So you got your center line here. All right, you can just keep bringing it out from the center.
See how, how I did that one compared to this one? You know, also because you can, so you can go like this here too. Like don't pay attention to this stuff and make it so like there's a center part of the tree too facing at you. There's lots, so many different ways to do it. Um, so, but since I still got this cuts all extreme flame burr on here, I'm going to, uh, I'm also running a Dremel 4000 Dremel flex shaft with a foot, a cheap Amazon foot pedal for on and off. I'm just going to cut the things in the bark. Nothing special, just quick little things. So let me hook up a different burr. I think I'll use the Cutsaw Taper Burr. This is the silver one. It might be, no, this is the silver one. And I'm going to cut these out first. So cut, try and do a little bit of an undercut. Remove your wood. Cut, remove the wood. Cut, remove the wood on both sides. Okay, so I did, I did cut, remove. I cut all my lines, and now I'm going to taper away those cut lines. So you see, this branch rides underneath this branch. So all this, I'm going to go down one side and taper that away all down. Then I'm going to go along here. And just taper that out and smooth it out. You'll see. Okay. So, what am I doing here? So you see how this one is tucked underneath this one and it's tucked underneath there? Tucked underneath that. Watch this. Tucked underneath here. This one's tucked underneath both of them. This is the middle one, right? And this one's tucked underneath that. So let's just keep going with this burr. Like I said, this is a simple carving. So what I'm doing is my cuts really quick, then I'm going to come along after and clean up 
down where the where it underlaps, like right here. And you see how I'm giving my petals, petal leaf things, all the same movement, but these ones are just straight. So what you can do is just give it a cross. Okay, I'm gonna run around and clean everything up. So there's that tight. You could use a, you could use the metal working bit. Uh, sorry, the aluminum cutter like this, like this one here, and use it on edge like I'm showing on my finger on the on the edge, and give this really fine um, details. But that's good enough for that one. Now this one, we're just gonna go like I said, come out from the middle. Okay, so there's your cuts. Now let's taper down those cut lines. And trust me, I know I'm really rushing this. So now you got your center of the, your tree, right? And your tree would go like this. So you want to bring some lines down each side, starting at the center. Actually, what we'll do is we'll do an undercut like this. So we'll bring our branches out like this. So that one's undercut on that side, so let's try and switch it around so... So there's kind of two different quick trees. So I'll hook up the um, sanding mandrel, quickly sand them, 
and um, carry on. So we will get uh, the wood burner out and burn on, burn around these edges later. That will act as an undercut. So I was not plant. This has a flat roof. So let's show you an example. So here's a side. The roof's just going to go like this. So I and there's no overhang on the roof on the sides because I know it's going to be under cover. So like it's just going to it's just going to butt up like this. Normally you want to have overhangs on the sides to keep the rain out, but it's going to be in my carport. So. This, all I'm going to do, trust me, I really didn't want to carve the roof. All I'm going to do is I'm going to find some moss and glue some moss up here. So I'm just going to kind of um, round the edges so it looks like there's a roof in there. Kind of dealio thing. Um... Yeah, and now, you know, you can make it so, draw a line here, you can cut, remove some of this wood, so it looks like there's a fascia board there, and you can kind of have, like, your little shingle ends there. So, let me put the cut saw Extreme Flame Burr back in and round these edges. All right, so what side's your bottom? Right, right here. Go turn your drum back up. Just quickly round them off. Now here, facial board. Okay, so there, you know, cutting with the carving with a Dremel is so much faster than carving with a knife. You can cut in any which way, direction. Well, in most cases, you can cut um, in any which direction you want with the grain. Okay, so uh, I'll finish this off and then we'll do some, I'll show you the wood burner and painting. Don't forget to sign your pieces. So I got everything carved to the quickly way I wanted to carve it. I hope this is able to motivate some of you. Um, one thing I thought I was filming, but I wasn't filming. This is a cheap Amazon wood burner. You get, when you buy this, you get a bunch of different tips. And I just wood burnt around the edges of everything. Like you can see the wood burn in here. And um, the shingles down here and around everything and up under the stock. This helps separate. It's it, This acts as an undercut because you're getting deep under there. And when you're doing the painting, it, it creates like a ditch. So the paint, I don't water down my paint, but some people do. Just carve Rob likes to water down his paint. But if you, if you do water down your paint, it likes to travel in the wood. Depends how whatever dense it is or stuff absorb it is absorbative it will act like a dip so the water won't go from the tree to the back piece all right all right so i suggest for the very beginners get yourself a cheap amazon wood burner yep it's great to have so now i'm gonna paint i'm just gonna paint this i got some dollar store paint here i'm not gonna film painting got some brown for hair some brown for the trunk and some different greens for the tree itself. Just to add some color to my carport. You don't have to paint it. You can get a little torch, wood burn it, and sand it and all that stuff. But, um, yeah. So don't forget to carve a little ladder for the little baby birds to get out once they're done hatching. Or whatever it's called. 
So really simple carving, fun to do. Going to brighten up your yard or house. I think this is a great project for um, grandpas that have grandkids. They don't need to carve the wood. They can just paint on the wood. You know, get the grandkids to participate, or if you're a young adult, or if you're an old adult and you got kids that uh, want to help make the birdhouse, I think it's a great family project. So now I got these hinges. Yeah, you're supposed to be able to open the door so you can clean it once a year. I got these hinges. I don't know how they're going to work. I've had them around for a couple of years. Just more junk that I got. Um, I'm going to take this downstairs outside, uh, hook up my compressor, and I got a little brad nailer. I'm going to put it together, and then we'll put some moss on the roof. You can, you know, with this roof, you can do whatever you want to do. You can carve a little chimney, glue it on there, screw it on there, um, put moss on it. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do. I think I got the uh, idea from the... I don't know if Amy, shout out to Amy Jo. I don't know if she's done the moss on the birdhouse roof, but um, I think that's maybe where subconsciously I got the idea. Or actually, I think I did a chimney and I put moss around the uh, chimney before. So then you can have mushrooms on the roof. You can have goats on the roof. You can have flying pigs on the roof that just landed for a break. You can carve a dragon, put it on the roof. You can carve whatever you want to do. That's the great thing about this stuff. Do what you want to do. Do what makes you happy. Oh, anybody home? Well, they're starting to build a nest, but... Uh, oh, boy, I don't know. Hello? Is anybody home? You can see in there they're building the nest, but um, the bottom of the thing's right here. So I don't know if I should just... Leave this. I'm not going to take this down. No, I'll leave it up. So I use my hot glue gun first to put it together. This little one here. Like I said, you guys can just use nails or whatever. And another thing too, I'm not going to bother putting a door on it. If I need to clean this thing in a couple years, I'll just carve another one. Or I could carve a hole in the back here and then put sheet metal over it, clean it out. I'm not uh, putting these hinges on it. Pass. But there's the other one up here. So there you go. Just a simple little birdhouse with a silly little birdie on it. I've had this for a few years. Even the plastic spray is breaking off the wing. Just a dollar store thing. Um, I used a hot glue gun. I had some old moss here from last year from the dollar store or a while ago. And I just glued some down there. I had these little egg corns that I got. I don't know, from a tree somewhere a couple years ago or a year. Put those on there. Put one up there. Pisses me off because I had a little uh, little tiny pine cones I had saved for. I found them on a tree, underneath a tree. And um, I know where they are. I'm going to get some more, but I couldn't find them. So, But anyways, that just shows you. You know, you could make this tree the whole width. You don't have to cut it out and make it like a tree inside the wood. I just carved in some quick little seagulls just to show me. This is a very beginning carving or a woodworking project that I know for a fact 100% anybody can do. I didn't look up birdhouse measurements or anything like that. I just cut the things and I did it and it's there it is. There's gaps. Don't care. Look at the gap in the back here. I tried to fill it up with a hot glue gun. Um, this is just something like those hangers. I'm going to hang it with this from Amazon. Jory Johnson, 2024. There's another tree with some silly little seagulls. Got the breather holes for the bird. And um, that's it. I know you can do it. Anybody can do it. I think this is, uh, like I said, a great uh, family project. Carbon Fusion, over and out. There, I put it on the nail in the back wall. Now it's hanging. Have some fun. Give your home some color or gift it away. And one more thing, too. I know I already said over and out, but birdhouses are big sellers. Look on Etsy. Look how much people are selling the uh, Wood Spirit face birdhouses for $100 and up. This is like, if I was going to sell this, even though it's just like a very beginning carving thing, it's like an $80 birdhouse. I'd get it for it, too. Trust me.